Hello everyone. I welcome you all in this uh, video lecture. I am Professor Anish Vora, and in today's video lecture, we will be discussing stator design for synchronous machine. Some of the stator design we have discussed in a previous lecture, and some part of the stator design for synchronous machine we will be discussing in this video lecture. So we have called it uh, part two: synchro uh, stator design. So in this video lecture, in case of stator design for synchronous alternator, what exactly we will be discussing? So let us see one by one that what uh, which type of stator design we will be discussing in this video lecture. So first, that is slot dimension. So in case of slot dimension, we will be discussing width of the slot and depth of the slot. Then a mean length of the turn. Mean length is very important uh, to discuss or to uh, calculate the resistance of the stator winding. Resistance of the stator winding, and at the same time, a leakage reactance of the stator winding. Then we'll finally design our stator core. And in case of stator core, we'll be discussing depth of the stator core as well as. Uh, overall diameter of the stator core that is outer diameter so let us uh, see one by one and we start with the slot dimension in case of slot dimension as i said earlier that uh, in case of slot dimension we'll be uh, designing or we'll be calculating width of the slot as well as based on the width we'll be calculating depth of the slot now a width of the slot the limiting value for the width of the slot that is uh, our terminal rated voltage because the width depends on the level of insulation we use and the insulation width is dependent on the terminal voltage of the synchronous alternator so width we have to select based on our terminal voltage let us see what in which range we can uh, select our slot width so terminal voltage and slot width for a lower rated voltage the width of the slot can be chosen between 12 to 16 millimeter the voltage range suppose it is in uh, from 11 kV to 16 kV then uh, we can go for a 17 to 24 millimeter slot width and for higher rated voltage this range of higher and lower rated voltage that is uh, based on 11 kV so less than 11 kV we have taken as a lower rated voltage and based on and above in range between 11 to 16 and above we have considered as a higher rated voltage so in case of higher rated voltage maximum maximum slot width can be considered as a 24 millimeter and same way we have a slot depth actually slot depth normally as a rule of thumb we can take four to five times to the slot width so in designing the width of the slot is important and once we have slot width available then based on the slot width we will be de designing our slot depth and uh, as a rule as I said that is four to five times to the slot width but uh, now again based on the voltage let us see a, lo a lower rated voltage for this range will be taking slot depth between 70 to 120 millimeter and for a higher range that is 11 to 16 kV will be uh, taking 125 to 165 millimeter this is slot depth so now as I said the width of the slot is very important so again how we uh, design or how we calculate our uh, slot width so width of the slot if you know the properly the geometry of the stator then we know that slot pitch minus tooth width 
it is exactly equal to the width of the slot so we need to find or we need to calculate the width of the slot but that again it depends on the width of the tooth and in case of width of the tooth we know that minimum width can be considered based on the flux density and flux density that is considered in the teeth on the gap side that is a maximum it can be taken as a 1.8 weber per meter square we have discussed this so many times in different lectures that a maximum flux density that can be taken in the width that is 1.8 weber per meter square so based on this minimum width we can have a maximum slot width so as per this equation b s is equal to gamma s minus b t so that is slot pitch minus tooth width so maximum slot width b s maximum that can be taken as a slot pitch that is gamma s minus b t minimum width of the teeth when we consider minimum at that time we have maximum slot width available but while designing minimum width of the tooth we need to take care about flux density it should not increase beyond a limiting value that is 1.8 weber per meter square otherwise it will go into saturation and losses will be highly excessive so where a uh, bs that is a uh, slot width bt that is tooth width we use b for uh, width to indicate the width and suffix s and t for slot as well as for tooth and gamma s that is a uh, slot pitch so slot pitch we know that uh, how to calculate slot pitch that is pi and multiplied by diameter so pi d that is circumference uh, of the stator and divided by number of slots how to calculate number of slots that we have considered in our previous lecture that based on the flux density in the stator teeth uh, what exactly the uh, equation for the flux density that is b t s suffix t s b capital b is for flux density and suffix t s that is for tooth and uh, s is for stator that is uh, equal to the flux divided by area and uh, how to calculate area that is a uh, bt that is a uh, width of the tooth li that is net iron length and multiplied by psi psi is uh, polar to pole pitch ratio and uh, number of slots per pole so by this equation we can easily able to calculate flux density of the stator teeth but we are interested in the width of the teeth so from this equation we can derive one equation for teeth of the uh, uh, width of the tooth and uh, as uh, it is indicated in this equation so flux divided by psi that is polar to pole pitch ratio multiplied by number of slots per pole and multiplied by li that is net iron length but now we have flux density of the tooth of the stator tooth that is uh, in the equation and we know that uh, maximum flux density at the gap side air gap side in the teeth it can be taken as a 1.8 weber per meter square that is maximum so if we substitute this maximum value in this equation then uh, we can easily able to calculate uh, our width of the tooth where uh, phi that is flux per pole s that is number of slots p is equal to number of poles li that is uh, net iron length and psi that is a uh, polar to pole pitch ratio now once we have width available based on the terminal voltage and the size of the conductor as well as size of the insulation the space occupied by the insulation as well as conductor or coil we can easily able to calculate uh, our space factor and uh, as i said earlier that uh, as a rule of thumb 
we can take four to five times our depth of the stratus plot and uh, in case of uh, depth the area can be utilized or depth can be utilized uh, depth wise in uh, normally that is space occupied by the insulated conductors turns insulation slot insulation separator between two layers wedge lip and some tolerance so we require this much of space uh, depth wise so this is all about uh, slot dimension in case of slot dimension basically we have width as well as depth so how to calculate width and based on the width how we can utilize the depth and what maximum depth which type of uh, maximum depth can be considered that we have discussed now mean length turn so in case of mean length of the turn it is divided into four different uh, parts so length of the coil in the slot so the active length that is l l is the length of the core so our uh, one coil has a two turn or two conductor so it is always a two times l so that is our actual active length then a length of the overhang portion now we know that uh, length of the overhang depends on the ball pitch and uh, it is approximately estimated as a uh, overhang uh, portion of the length approximated as a uh, 2.5 times ball pitch so it is 2.5 times ball pitch then a length of the straight portion extending from the core now this depends on the rated terminal voltage this length of the uh, uh, turn depends on the rated terminal voltage and normally it is estimated as 0 0.05 times rated terminal voltage now rated terminal voltage in this case is considered or taken in kilowatt that is kv so 0.05 to 0 0.06 sometimes we take a 0 0.06 also and length of the end portion so either it is a multi turn coil or single turn coil so end portion can be considered as a 0.15 meter in meter 0.15 sometime in some design we take maximum up to 0.2 meter so our mean length or rather length of the turn is divided into this four portion and based on this four different uh, portion we have a length of mean turn so that is uh, l m t m and t that is mean and turn length of the mean turn that is a 2L, that is our active length, plus 2.5 times tau, tau is our pole pitch, plus 0 0.05 kV, it should be always in kV, plus 0.15, and value will be in meter. So this way we can able to calculate uh, our mean length of the turn. Once we have mean length of the turn available, and uh, previously we have calculated the total number of turns per phase in stator so knowing both these values we can easily able to calculate the uh, resistance of the stator winding so resistance of stator winding normally it is uh, indicated by this equation r h that is resistance and stator winding so rho multiplied by a length of the mean turn multiplied by turns per phase and divided by cross section area of the stator conductor so uh, rho is the resistivity then we have lmt that is length of the mean turn in meter turns per phase that is t and suffix phase that is stator number of turns per phase and finally we have as that is area of the stator conductor in millimeter square 
if all the values and all the values are known we can easily able to calculate the resistance of the stator winding we need to calculate the eddy current loss and the factor of eddy current loss can be added while calculating the equivalent stator resistance so our next is a leakage reactance to calculate per unit leakage reactance that is xl we have a ratio of current per phase to voltage per phase that is i phase to e phase and multiplied by leakage reactance and ultimately we will get per unit leakage reactance where xl that is the total stator reactance per phase and uh, we calculate uh, overhang as well as uh, slot leakage reactance for calculating total stator reactance per phase so xl that is uh, equal to the xo plus xss so xo that is overhang leakage reactance per phase and xss that is uh, stator slot leakage reactance per phase so if both the leakage reactance is estimated then uh, we can have per unit leakage reactance of the stator or armature winding now depth of the stator core while designing core of the stator we need to calculate uh, depth first we need to calculate depth and then based on the depth of the core and depth of the slot we can easily able to calculate the outer diameter of the stator core so if we know or uh, with the proper assumption of the flux density in the stator core we can easily able to calculate the depth of the core normally the flux density in the stator core that is uh, considered as a 1.1 to 1.3 weber per meter square so we have a equation flux density in the stator core so that is a bc b is a flux density capital b and c is for core so that is flux 5 and divided by 2 we have half of the flux of the air gap flux is passing through the section of the stator core so 5 by 2 is considered and ac ac is a, a cross section area of the stator core so sectional area of the stator core ac can be considered as a product of dc dc is a, again depth of the core and multiplied by li li is a, we know that it is a net length of the iron so sectional cross sectional area of the stator core is easily available and if we substitute this value in the equation of flux density of the stator core then we have a final equation that flux density bc is equal to flux 5 divided by 2 multiplied by depth of the core and net iron length now if we assume proper flux density as i said earlier that 1.1 to 1.3 weber per meter square in this range we can select our uh, value of flux density in the core so if this value is known or properly assumed then uh, from this equation we can easily able to calculate depth of the core and we have a equation for the depth of the core that is flux 5 divided by 2 multiplied by uh, bc that is flux density of the core and uh, we have net iron length so most of the values is known and uh, as i said we can easily uh, assume appropriate uh, value of flux density of the core so ultimately we can able to calculate the depth of the core once depth of the core is available then uh, as uh, i said earlier that outer diameter of the stator core can be calculated so outer diameter of the stator core so that is uh, do from this equation outer diameter of the stator core can be uh, easily calculated so do that is equal to d that is uh, d is a stator bore diameter plus two times dc plus dss dc that is depth of the core and dss that is depth of the stator slot so dc is depth of the stator core and dss that is depth of the stator slot 
now all the values are available so with uh, these values we can easily able to calculate outer diameter of the stator core thank you very much we have considered almost all stator parameters of stator design in this part 2 for uh, overall stator design watch part 1 as well as part 2 and the design numerical based on this uh, stator design so we'll have almost uh, uh, entire stator design in part 1 as well as part 2 thank you watching for my video keep watching thank you very much